Hey friends, it is me Alana. Welcome back to my channel. For this video, I am going to be doing a three month wrap up. I realized that in my uh, unfortunate absence and inconsistency with my videos due to school and just mental health and life things. I have not really been posting any wrap-ups of the things that I've read each month. I should have one for January and February going up before this goes up, but this video is going to be covering March, April, and May because I want to tell you what I read. I want you to see that I'm not just promising to read things in my TBRs and not actually reading them. So in March I read seven books, April I read one book, which you can see how that month went for me, and then May I read six. So as you can see, April was kind of a terrible month for me in reading wise and honestly kind of mental health wise. Fun things happened, I was able to see some friends I hadn't seen for a long time. I was also able to meet Monet from Life with Monet. She flew out and we got to hang out. And so that was actually really, really fun. Uh, she is one of my favorite people ever and I'm so grateful we've able to like develop the friendship that we have. April was just kind of a busy month. It was hectic. So that one book is kind of a miracle that I even read that book. May, I kind of caught back up, back, I got my mojo back and thankful to the audiobook gods because that's really how I was able to get the thing, get as many books read as I did. So let's start with my March books. So in March, I read Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. This was actually a reread for me. I decided after reading both House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath and loving them super much, I wanted to go back and read through all of Sarah J Maas's backlist titles and the previous two series that uh, she has written. And I decided to start with Throne of Glass since that's the first series she's done. So I'm slowly working my way through those books this year and of course I had already read Throne of Glass about two years ago but I couldn't really remember much so I just decided to go ahead and reread it and I kind of enjoyed it the same amount as I did the first time around. I think I gave it four, star four stars the first time and I gave it four stars again. So I really enjoyed kind of Selena as a person. I enjoyed the mystery behind her. Uh, I had the same feelings that I had the first time about Kale and Dorian. I thought they were kind of boring. I don't know if I really liked them as love interests. In the first book, I really love Kale, um, but as I reread it, I was like, you know what? He is kind of boring. Like, I like him, but I don't know if I like him enough to want him to be the love interest at all. And I know Sarah J. Moss likes to do her little switcheroos, so I also know that he's like not endgame, at least from the limited knowledge that I have. I don't know how I've gotten this far in my life without being spoiled on this entire series. It's a skill. So I really don't know what's gonna happen next. But uh, yeah, really enjoyed this reread. Really, I, I think I'm enjoying the read through so far that I'm doing, so. I'll let you know as we keep going. Next, I read None Shall Sleep by Ellie Marnie. I gave this one four stars. So this is kind of like thriller. It's kind of like a Criminal Minds-esque story, if that makes sense. So if you've ever read The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which is one of my favorite series ever by her, I picked None Shall Sleep Up because people said if you liked The Naturals you would like this book and it definitely did give me Naturals vibes in regards to this girl does get recruited by the FBI to be a part of this special program in order to help solve cold cases. So it had those similarities but None Shall Sleep held its own for me where it, it, it did have its differences as well whereas with The Naturals, Cassie has like a natural instinct to read people because her mother was killed and blah blah blah. Well in None Shall Sleep the girl 
is the one who actually experienced the serial killer. She was kidnapped, she was held captive, but she was the only survivor to like get away from him. And so that's her kind of, I don't want to say expertise, but that's like the knowledge the FBI wants because she's experienced serial killers before, so she should know the way they think in that regard. And she's paired up with another man who has some trauma due to another serial killer. And um, they form this like team in order to help solve cold cases and then they get pulled into an active case as the story goes on the other difference is that this does take place in like the 80s so it's a little bit older than the time frame of the naturals um but i really liked it still i really enjoyed the storytelling i really enjoyed the viewpoint of the main character i liked that they didn't just brush aside this traumatic event that she went through um it still was with her even as it it's been like maybe like a year or two past it happening to her. I also thought it was interesting the way they talked about um, like her triggers and mental health. So I really enjoyed um, that aspect of the story. I thought the part where she kind of forms this, not bond, she forms this connection with another killer um, and that's who they're going to to help solve these cases. And so I really enjoyed that aspect too because it just gave you another perspective in that regard. So overall, I liked it. I didn't realize it was a standalone and I actually wish it would turn into a series of some sort or even just a duology because I want to check back in. I want them to do another case together. I really liked the team that they were. So if you're looking for a good kind of like psychological thriller, YA of course, then I would recommend this one because I think it, it, it did a pretty good job. Next, I read Gleam by Raven Kennedy, which is the third book in the Plated Prisoner series. I love this series. <laughs> Monet and Cell got me hooked, and so now I'm just as obsessed as they are. This series is a King Midas retelling, and it follows a girl who is like King Midas's favored and the whole time she's with him she thinks like he loves her and this is what love really looks like but she encounters some characters in uh as the story goes on that really make her realize that maybe this love that she thought was love isn't so healthy and i really enjoyed it i gave this five stars i think this was the best yet especially because of the ending it gave me scarlet witch snapped vibes to be honest so i'm here for it i highly recommend the series if you're looking for a good fantasy romance it's fun it's fun times note though that the romance is slow burn so don't expect much in that department but everything else solid next i read the war of two queens by jennifer l armentrout this is the fourth book in the from blood and ash series i gave this four stars i was really skeptical because the third book just was weird and it didn't really fulfill what i needed it to do for me but I think Jennifer L. Armentrout redeemed herself with this one, especially towards the end where things started really happening and the story really started to pick up again. In case you don't know, the From Blood and Ash series follows Poppy, who lives in this world where she is the maiden and she is supposed to help her society ascend. But she doesn't really know what that means. She realizes that she's actually just been kept in the dark about a lot of things. And she experiences Hawk who comes in and kind of opens her eyes to what her society is really doing and showing her that maybe they aren't as good as she thinks they are. I've enjoyed the series. Again, the third one was kind of eh, but this one definitely made up for it. And I'm really looking forward to the next book to see what happens next. It closed some things up, but then it opened a lot more doors. So it's I'm intrigued to see where she's going to take this. The next book I read was Divergent by Veronica Roth. This was a reread for a project that I am working on. 
and I gave this a three stars, which definitely is different than my first rating, which I think I read this in 2014 when I was in high school or around that time frame of me being in high school. And I definitely gave it five stars back then. But as I listened to it this time around, I gave it three stars. I enjoyed the story for the most part but I think it just definitely was like a, a height of its time kind of thing like going back now 2022 and reading through the book I'm like yeah this was 2014 that era was definitely this the prime of this book <laughs> so that's kind of all I have to say about it I am tempted to read the rest of the trilogy to see how I feel about the rest of those books even though we all know how I felt about the last book but I don't know if I want to I'm still on the fence so we'll see how that goes the next book I read was The Color of Dragons by R.S. Salvatore and Erica Lewis so this one I also gave three stars this was okay it was not what I was expecting expecting so it's about this girl who lives in this kingdom where magic is outlawed what's well, about her and then a boy who is like the fighter of the kingdom the girl develops magic and so she kind of has to hide it from the higher-ups because she doesn't want to die and the boy has to decide whether he's going to continue to overlook the evil that his king is doing in this kingdom or if he's finally going to stand up to him it was kind of boring I'm gonna be honest this book and I didn't like the way it kind of just ended like I feel like the ending wasn't an ending it just was like oh they did this and then 50 years from now and I was like that's not an ending at least for me so it was just a solid three stars and the last book in March that I read was Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cas Casimano. So this book was amazing. I gave it four stars. I read the audio. I love the audio so much. It was so funny. It made me feel so many things. And I was just kind of here for it. So it follows this uh, lady, Finley Donovan, who is an author. But she's kind of hit a rough patch in life where she's divorced, she's trying to be a single mom, she's trying to pay her bills, and she's very, very behind on her book deadline, like two years behind. And so she's trying to figure out a way to find time to work on her book, but also get some quick cash because she needs to pay the bills, and it's just very chaotic. So one day, <laughs> she's at lunch with her editor, and or her agent and they're talking about her book and she's she's a she's a mystery writer so she they're talking about murder and dead bodies and all this kind of stuff and this lady at another table overhears their conversation and assumes the wrong thing she ends up assuming that finley donovan is actually a hit woman <laughs> And she approaches Finley after her agent leaves and basically gives her her number and a job and cash. <laughs> $10,000 cash, I believe. And from there, this chaotic story ensues because Finley's trying to decide, do I do it? Do I be honest and tell this lady that I'm really just an author? And the funny thing is that the man ends up dying in Finley's custody due to unfortunate circumstances <laughs> so it's just a really chaotic story but i actually really loved it it was so fun and funny and i really loved the dynamic between her and her babysitter who actually gets um kind of wrapped up in this chaos as well and i'm actually really excited to read the second book because i think this is a good time and if you just need some like fun energy in a book or if you're in a slump and you need to pick me up I think this would be a good choice so for April the book that I read was Duke Actually by Jenny Holiday and I listened to the audio for this one and I gave it two stars I honestly found this book boring I didn't really care for the characters I thought the main girl was annoying I thought the guy was kind of childish 
I just, I just was not in love with the story or the romance at all. And that's okay. I really can't tell you why specifically I just didn't love it, but I just was not for me. The story, I believe, follows, follows this lady who develops this friendship with a duke and they don't really have good opinions of each other at first and then they decide to fake date because they have different circumstances in each other's lives that they need to like portray themselves as stable i guess and so having a partner would do that for them and so from there they like do the whole fake dating fall in love thing and yeah i don't know it just wasn't for me i don't want to say it was terrible i think other people would probably enjoy this book i just did not really like it that was the only book I read in April, so kind of sucky, but that's okay. Next, moving on to May. So, the first book I read in May was Crown of Midnight, continuing on my uh, Throne of Glass read-through. I gave this 3.5 stars. I liked it for the most part, though Sarah J Maas does something in this book that I found very awful, like... Uh, it happened and I had to like stop listening for like a day because I couldn't believe that she did it and I'm still upset about it right now because I just didn't know if this thing that she did was necessary but whatever I found Kale and Dorian boring again actually I found Kale very annoying I was like ah this man needs to just be dead or go away I don't know Dorian was also annoying because he was just so needy I was like I just need you to not be center stage so yeah that's how I felt <laughs> um those are basically all my thoughts I thought Selena was good I liked her she's badass then I read um if I had your face by Frances Cha I read this as a buddy read with Maureen and Chanel and I gave this one three stars I enjoyed it for the most part it's kind of like a compilation of perspectives of these five women who kind of live all in the same building I think it's four or five women but uh, I thought it was pretty nice it was pretty like easy read you're just kind of reading from their point of views about their lives and their pasts and how they kind of intertwine with each other and I really liked it I really found it interesting um, some characters I kind of found more interesting than others but that's okay uh, and if you're looking for like a nice easy contemporary fiction to read I would recommend this one then I read The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. This is also part of a special project that I'm doing along with Divergent. This one was also a reread. I also read this one around the 2014 time frame uh, when I was in high school. And I think, I don't even know what I rated it the first time around. Maybe three stars because I just didn't really enjoy it back then. But to be honest, I listened to the audiobook this time around. And I gave this five stars. This audiobook was so freaking good. I cannot tell you. Like, I was just kind of hooked. I was like, you know what? Yes, Katniss, fight the people. And then I had to go watch the movie after this because the movies were just as good. So, yeah. If you're new, if you've never read The Hunger Games, it follows this girl, Katniss Everdeen, who lives in this dystopian society where the whatever land she lives in is broken up into... 12 districts and every I think is every year they hold a hunger games where they take a boy and a girl from each district and put them in this arena to fight to the death and there can only be one winner and so Katniss is from district 12 which is like the one of the poorest districts and the one everybody like nobody ever expects to win and she is unfortunately uh, she's not chosen, but she volunteers to join the games this year and has to fight to the death. But yeah, it was really interesting. I actually really enjoyed the audio, so I highly recommend listening to that if you haven't listened to it already. The next book I read was Book Lovers by Emily Henry. 
I give this 4.5 stars. I actually really enjoyed this book. I liked it more than People We Meet on Vacation, but I think Beach Read is still my top uh, book from her. But this gave me kind of the same emotional ties that Beach Read gave me, which is why I really enjoyed reading it. It follows this girl named Nora, who uh, is a literary agent, and she views herself as the evil villain in a Hallmark movie, if that makes sense. So like, you know, in a Hallmark movie where you have the main couple, the guy or the girl moves to a small town, um, for work or to try by a business something like that and back home in whatever major city they live in they have like a fiance or boyfriend or whatever that they're dating that's very like type a whatever whatever but then they come to the small town and they fall in love with the business owner or whoever from the small town and they decide to stay and blah 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 well she sees herself as the or the significant other that gets left in the big city to uh pick up the pieces and every relationship she's had actually has ended up like that hallmark movie plot where her boyfriend goes to a small town to do something business-like and then falls in love with whoever and then dumps her so she's kind of just given up on romance in general but she meets Charlie, who is a book editor. And when they first meet, they both are in very sour moods due to personal circumstances. And they just don't make a good impression on each other. But the tension is so good between them. It's just, it's there. And then years later, Nora and her sister go on vacation because her sister is set on making Nora live her life outside of work and there she runs into Charlie and the tension is back. So it's a really good book. The only thing that I had a problem with was her sister. I just found her sister to be very condescending at times and very annoying. There are moments where her sister is like being annoying and saying like Nora works too much and her work is her life and blah 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 and I just I was getting annoyed because I was like I could see if Nora was like like I hate my job but I need to be perfect at my job like no Nora genuinely loves her job she likes giving these people her time she likes being an agent she doesn't want like kids and all that kind of stuff so I just found that annoying because she just kept assuming things about Nora's life without really talking to Nora and yeah but other than that i really love the book i like the characters i like i thought nora and charlie were so cute together i really enjoyed the tension i enjoyed the witty banter between them because it was golden i was cracking up a lot throughout the book just with the dialogue between them so uh if you are hesitant about this emily henry book i recommend you checking it out because i really enjoyed it and this signifies that she is officially an auto buy author for me because I have enjoyed every one of her books so far. So next I read Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. This one I gave 3.5 stars. I thought the ending was better than the beginning. Unfortunately, this started so slow for me. It's such a short book, but it took me forever to read it because it was just slow. And... Maybe it's just because of the time, I don't know, or maybe it's because the audiobook actor's accent was like very thick and it was like hard for me to understand what was going on so I had to slow it down even more. But uh, that was like a hard, the hardest part for me reading this book. But when we really got into the chunk, the mystery, the, the what's his face solving it, that's really when I caught it caught my interest and I actually was um invested in the story and the mystery and seeing who did it I actually really liked the way this ended like I liked the reveal of who did it because along the way like I was questioning with him as he was like working through this case uh, and then later when it was revealed I was like that makes sense everything makes sense now that you've revealed what happened <laughs> but i actually really liked it i might give her another chance and i might pick up one of her other 
more popular books and see if I can enjoy that one as well. But I see I see why people like her. I see why they call her basically the, the queen of mystery. I'm here for it. Just in case you need to know what this is about, this follows Hercule Purot? Purit? Yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry. So it, I'm, I'm not even going to say his name because I know I'm going to butcher it. It follows this investigator who ends up on the Orient Express for the night trying to get to another place, his destination, whatever. And on the train, somebody dies. So now he has to solve the murder on who done it. The last book I read in May was The Atlas Six by Olive Blake. I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed this story. I loved the different perspectives that we got. So it follows five perspectives of these uh, people who were recruited by Atlas to join the Alexandrian society that protects the Alexandria library which everybody thought burnt down but actually it's been hidden for like the sake of protecting knowledge or whatever so technically there are six spots within this uh, competition almost to be accepted into the society but we only get five perspectives and at the end of the time frame that they're given only I think five people will move on these six candidates have to work together to study but also compete against each other and so as they get further into this time frame some really trippy stuff starts to happen and they start to really question whether this society is what they thought they what it was or if it's what atlas promised it actually was i really enjoyed the different perspectives i am a big libby stan i don't know why but i loved her so much uh callum can choke i don't like that man there were moments where i was like confused because the science of it was going over my head but as the story went on I was really hooked especially when the mystery elements started coming in and I was like oh what's happening who did it what's going on and I I was just I was just hooked so I'm really here for this I'm intrigued to see what happens next in the Atlas Paradox uh, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this, but this was actually a surprising read for me. So I'm here for it and I'm glad I enjoyed it. So that was my wrap up for March to May. <laughs> I will try not to get behind again on wrap ups because I don't want to do this again. So Thank you all for watching if you stayed this long. Um, let me know if you liked the video down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all those in the comment section. Let me know some books you've enjoyed so far this year that you would recommend. Or leave me an emoji. I don't care which emoji, just leave me one that you love. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. You are some flowers in a world full of weeds.